Episode 2, Chapter 2, The Great Egg's Cape Chapter 2, The Great Egg's Cape Luigi opened his eyes to blackness, and wasn't sure whether he was blind or dead. Moments ago, or had it been hours, he had been standing beside Mario and their friends as a rogue comet had come screaming at them out of the sky. He remembered the ground shaking, and the world going white as he was thrown off his feet. Now he was flat on his back in the dark, surrounded by a chorus of whimpers and moans. This is it, then. I'm in the underwear. Every time I go to one of Peach's parties, something bad happens. I should have guessed it would kill me eventually. He only became more confused when he pushed himself into a sit, and saw that he was still in the castle's front plaza. Around him, party guests were waking up, stumbling to their feet and staggering off. Mario was to his right, coughing himself back to consciousness, while Vivian lay behind him with her eyes squeezed shut. The castle itself stood intact across the way, still and silent, as if the comet had never come. A soft orange glow came from within, illuminating a lonely island in a sea of black that seemed to stretch forever. Okay, so not the underwear, Luigi reasoned, but where did the stars go? He strained his eyes against the abyss that had become the sky, but saw no sign of light. No stars, no moon, no comet. He turned to ask Mario, but his brother was already up and off, speeding towards the West Gardens with Yoshi the dinosaur. No doubt he was headed to retrieve the princess, which left Luigi alone to ponder the lightless sky. He sighed, and pushed himself to his feet. Hesitantly, he made his way back to the front gate and stuck out his hand. During the chaos, an energy field had trapped them all inside the grounds, but now it seemed the magic was gone, so he wandered a bit further into the night. The bright festival lights of Toad Town were gone, too. By now, Luigi had expected to find concerned townsfolk approaching the castle to check on the princess, but he encountered no one. Beneath his feet, weeds grew between the cobblestones. At the edge of sight, a row of grey houses stood sunken and forlorn, yawning blackness from their empty doorways. The air was still, but Luigi felt a chill race down his spine. As he retreated back to the lit plaza, he found Vivian awake and worrying at her scarf. Mario ran off again, he told her, not missing the tinge of disappointment in her eyes. Take a look at this, there's something screwy going on. The siren glided closer, and Luigi showed her how the well-kept brick courtyard ended in an abrupt line and became decayed, weed choked cobbles. This is about where the barrier was so I'll bet it goes all the way around. I don't get what's happening, Vivian confessed. The comet hit us, didn't it? Shouldn't we be, um, smooshed? I thought the same thing. If the castle got hit, how's it the only place that's still standing? Thinking a moment, he added, we should get everybody back inside. The crowd, however, was reluctant to stay. Now that the barrier was down, some of the guests thought it wise to wander out beyond the walls. Perhaps they intended to stumble back to their homes in town and go to bed, or maybe they just needed space to be by themselves. Either way, Luigi let them go. He was in no position to hold them prisoner. Still, he had to try his best. He and Vivian situated themselves to either side of the castle's large double doors, and together they herded what stragglers they could back inside. Easy now, no pushing please, Vivian urged as a family of rich-looking bob tried to shoehorn their way in. On Luigi's side, a pale grinning boo floated past, the plumber giving a quiet shiver as it brushed his shoulder with a smirk. Sounds of a scuffle made Luigi look back at the outer gate. Some of the guests were running back now, scrambling into the light. They must be seen the town, 
Luigi guessed, but he soon saw them more clearly as they entered the light. Some were bruised, some were gashed and bloody, and all were scared out of their wits. Worst of all, it seemed like far fewer people were returning than had left. There's something out there. At that moment, Luigi wanted nothing more than to hide inside, but he fought his instincts and crept down the steps towards the yawning darkness. He dared go no further than the gate, so he stopped and called out an anxious hello. There was no answer for a minute, then two. Then, stalking as one from the darkness like a beast from a cave, an army appeared. Luigi froze as they melted into view. Silent soldiers that must have numbered in the thousands. They spilled in through the gate and over the walls, claiming the plaza as their own. Some had spears, some had shields, but each wore grey iron armor and bore a closed helmet that gave no hint to their race. Soft light flickered from within the slits of their visors, orange and yellow like an armored flame. Do they have headlamps in there? Luigi asked himself. Do their eyes glow? Either way, a grid of eerie shadows followed their gaze across the yard. Adorning every shield and chest plate was an emblem that Luigi had never seen before. A white mushroom against an inverted purple star. In the dancing light of their candle faces, the symbol looked like death. Luigi stood as straight as he could. This legion of lamp men wasn't going to scare him. As if in response, a soldier broke ranks and stepped closer to address the sparse crowd. In the name of Her Grace the Empress, you will all stand down, the hollow voice said. Your princess will be taken captive, her castle destroyed. You will never see your homes and families again. He said it so simply, as if the ultimatum were a perfectly reasonable suggestion. Whispers broke out all around frantic and hushed. Oh, how Luigi wished his brother were here. Mario would know just how to handle this, he would pummel them all. Soft-hearted Luigi could barely see straight, but there were people he had to protect. Summoning every ounce of courage he had, he defied the order. You're not taking us, you hear? We'll never be your prisoners. The yard was silent. For a tense moment, no one moved or spoke. The soldier stared Luigi down through his glowing mask. Then stepped back and turned away. It worked. Luigi could scarcely believe it was that easy. He felt so brave, until he heard what the soldier said next. You heard the man, Lieutenant, he fixed his slits of light on the castle. Take no prisoners. In an instant, the army surged ahead and all hell broke loose. On the other side of the castle, Mario was having a bad time of his own. When he had awoken to the empty sky, he had known that something was deeply wrong. After checking to make sure his brother and Vivian were safe for the moment, he had hopped on Yoshi and made for where he had seen the princess. Mario knew how this went by now. If the castle was under attack, Peach was the target, and if Peach was a target, he was responsible for her safety. Now, he and Yoshi were crouched behind a low stone wall in the gardens, observing this strange new enemy. They had come from everywhere and nowhere, spilling through the hedges like fog. Mario shifted uncomfortably, they had to get moving, lest they lose the princess. Yoshi it seemed, had other plans. It's a lost cause, they're gonna get her. You know they are. I say we get out of here and live to fight another day. The dinosaur had a point, as history had proven, but Mario knew he could never live with himself if he just gave up. With a decisive leap back into the saddle, he urged Yoshi onwards and they sped off into the gardens. You're lucky I'm the loyal type. Because this is dumb even for us, Yoshi snarked. The enemy was everywhere, helmets flashing like fireflies, and the horde was only getting thicker. 
they couldn't risk being seen, not this far out from their goal. Hedging their bets, they took to the high road with a leap into the trees. From here, Mario could see hundreds of soldiers swarming the stage where Peach had been. They were headed the right way, at least, but the trees were thinning fast, and soon their cover would be gone. Yoshi jumped and fluttered from branch to branch, passing above the heads of the troops below. Somewhere far behind them, the sound of screams erupted from within the castle, and Mario knew time was running short. Without thinking, they leapt to the slick outstretched arm of a fountain statue, and promptly slipped off into the pool with a splash. The grey soldiers were on them immediately, a party of three rounding the bushes as Mario and Yoshi scrambled out of the water. Stand up slowly, one said, brandishing a spear. Turn around and put your hands against the fountain. So much for playing it safe. With a twitch of his mustache, Mario dashed toward the enemies, veering to take the one on the left. The foe raised their spear for a thrust, so Mario dropped to a crouch and swept out his leg, taking the spearmen in the knees and throwing them off balance. Leaping into the air, he took the staggered enemy out with an uppercut to the jaw. He adjusted his aim as he fell back down, and landed hard on the middle soldier. The lights in their helmet went out with a shatter, and they toppled over in a daze. As he turned to face the third, he found their spear at his chest. The warrior advanced, growling, but was suddenly yanked harshly out of sight by a wet pink tongue. Mario turned to Yoshi, who swallowed and gave a noncommittal shrug. Tastes like Goomba, he spat out the helmet, but crunchier. There's more coming, Mario urged, let's go. He hopped back astride his friend, and they set off in a sprint. The swarm was ahead of them now, the stage in view, but enemies were pouring in from all sides. They found themselves in a familiar situation, running and jumping through a gauntlet of death. Mario swept at one foe as Yoshi pounced on another, slurping up a third as Mario grappled with a fourth who had leapt aboard during the chaos. Up on stage, a hooded figure stood surrounded by an elite guard. The princess was here too suspended in a sparkling bubble. Mario! She called out as she spotted her hero. Help me! Bouncing off the head of a guard, Mario and Yoshi skidded across the stage and dropped into fighting stance. Side by side, they stared down the thing in the robe. Calmly, almost curiously, it cocked its head to the side and looked at the pair. It held out a gnarled hand, and the soldiers lowered their spears. So, this is Mario. It rasped. My, you grew up handsomely. You still have the same eyes. The thing's face was shrouded, its voice neutral, but Mario could just feel the twisted grin behind the words. I knew a version of you, once upon a time. Meeting you, I'm almost sorry I let him die. Mario knew better than to humor a maniac, so he said nothing. The hooded figure didn't seem to notice or care, and pressed on anyway. You must be Yoshi, then. I let him die, too. Is Luigi here as well? He cried like a baby when it was his turn. What was this thing saying? One by one, I lost all seven, except for her, of course. It clarified by sweeping an arm toward the bubbled princess. She's still around but I suppose that's more than you needed to know. Goodbye, Mario, I'm afraid it's time to die again. So this thing wanted to kill him, which was typical, but Mario wasn't about to let it have the pleasure. Giving a subtle nod to Yoshi, he darted ahead, zigging and zagging across the stage toward the princess and her captor. As he crossed the halfway point, the figure stepped back as if suddenly surprised the hero was actually coming. Hastily it raised a hand, and Mario staggered as he felt his vision blur and twist. The next moment, he was thirty feet in the air behind the stage, plummeting headlong into some bushes. It's time for me to leave, 
the figure gave a nervous chuckle as it turned away and addressed the guards, Mario all but forgotten. The princess is here. I did my job, so finish yours. Don't let either of them escape. Mario clambered back out of the bushes just in time to see the princess bubble swiftly begin to rise, trailing behind the hooded creature as it flew away into the night. No, not this time. He jumped to the stage, then again off the helmet of a guard, wildly grasping for the highest thing in sight. A slender silver flagpole. Peach was everything to her people. She had been everything to him once, too. He couldn't let her be taken, not in this strange place. Scurrying to the top of the pole, he threw out a hand for her to grab. It only sparked off the barrier bubble, and Peach gasped in horror as he reeled back and lost his grip. Mario fell to earth with a dizzying thud, and the soldiers were on him in an instant. Peach let out a final, desperate shriek as she was lost to the darkness, kidnapped again. On the ground, Mario saw the ring of spears close in overhead, shutting out the sky. He grit his teeth and prepared for the stab, but before it could come the ring was shattered by the explosion of a green-spotted egg as Yoshi rejoined the battle. The spearmen were scattered, some tumbling back off the stage, but now the army was coming. By now, Mario had regained his footing but not his equilibrium. He threw a punch wildly at the image of a soldier, but hit only air. He knew Yoshi was at his side, so he returned to the saddle only to howl in pain as a spear entered his leg. The dinosaur was off like lightning, carrying the injured plumber as they sprinted back the way they had come. The spear had come out as they left the soldier behind, and now blood was flowing freely from Mario's leg. Yoshi glanced back, perhaps for a sardonic I told you so, but shut his mouth at the sight of the bleeding wound. Every enemy in the gardens was on their tail now. As the two heroes weaved their way past topiaries and flower beds, a rising tide of assassins nipped at their heels. Yoshi inhaled soldiers and launched eggs, and somehow they made headway. The castle was in sight, but Mario felt himself getting lightheaded. He had no supplies, nothing to stop the flow. They had to get inside. Yoshi was shouting something, urging him to stay awake, but it was far too late for that. As they leapt back into the trees, Mario caught sight of something in his fading vision. Far away, so still and small he wasn't sure if it was real, there was one star left in the sky. Just one. A sad, lonely little speck lost against the infinite void. A moment later, Mario slipped into unconsciousness. The castle had fallen, there was no denying it now. Luigi pressed his ear against the cold stone wall and listened to the screams. Somewhere, in some far wing, a fire was roaring. He had barricaded himself in the pantry alongside Vivian and a few toads. After the grey soldiers had declared their intent in the plaza, the crowd had gone wild with panic. They were easy targets, but they had bought time for others to get inside and bar the door. As it turned out, it wasn't much use anyway, as the army steamrolled its way into the castle after only a few minutes. The kitchens were deserted, and Luigi reasoned that the troops wouldn't bother investigating the unassuming little storage closet in the corner. In here they had enough food to last a week or more, but that didn't matter much if the castle was burning down. The walls were stone, but the smoke would surely reach them from beneath the wooden door. It was now or never. They had to escape this place or die here, scared and alone. He turned to his friends with weary eyes. Vivian had shrunk into the shadows of a dark corner, as if trying to disappear. Two toads were holding the flimsy barricade by the door, while a third was munching on a loaf of bread. Toad and Toadette were looking at their phones. Now? They're texting at a time like this? He couldn't take it anymore. 
We have to get out of here, he addressed the group. There's a fire, and we'll suffocate in a place like this. Let's think of a plan. Kids, put those things away. But, Mr. Luigi, that's exactly what we're doing. Toadette piped up. See, Toad has the schematics of the whole castle on here. Oh, well that made perfect sense. He looked over her shoulder and saw that it was true, so the little group huddled around to analyze the maps together. There's a door at the back of the library, a blue toad pointed out, just here, see? If we can get there. We'll be on the second floor balcony, munched the bread-eating toad. What good will that do us? Vivian chimed in next. There's a spooky stone tunnel underneath the castle. See, here it is on the map. She dragged the basement level schematics into view and showed the group. I found it earlier when I was, um, trying to find a way through the barrier. She was right. It's an old canal from back when the castle still used a cistern, Luigi explained. He remembered the passageway from his plumbing days, he and Mario had once had to clear some fuzzies out of the place. It leads out to the river, well away from the castle. That's perfect! exclaimed the green toad. How do we get there? Luigi didn't like this part. It's in the basement. The nearest entrance is this stairwell here. He pointed at the map, off the inner courtyard. To get there. He dragged the screen, we'll have to get through the dining hall. Everyone was silent. At a time like this, neither of those sounded like places they'd want to be. Still, what choice did they have? After taking a short moment to equip what gear they could find, old broom, potato sack, half-eaten bread, they pushed open the door. Mamma mia, here we go, Luigi thought. The kitchens were empty, as was the adjoining hallway. They could still hear the screams, far distant and desperate. Looking out a window, Luigi could see that the central tower was ablaze. Where are you, big bro? He didn't have to wait long for an answer. They had no sooner entered the cathedral-esque dining hall when a high window shattered above them, and Yoshi came frantically fluttering in out of the night. In one swift move, Yoshi landed on a chandelier, grappled it with his tongue, and rappelled down onto a table. It was the most unhygienic stunt Luigi had ever seen. That was when he noticed Mario, slumping limply against Yoshi's back. Luigi ran to his brother, but Vivian beat him there. Together, they gingerly set Mario on the table, as Yoshi started tearing at the tablecloth, trying to rip a strip free. When he succeeded, Luigi grabbed the cloth out of his hands and firmly tied it over the bleeding wound on Mario's thigh. He even shoved a few napkins in there for good measure. Turning to Vivian, he instructed her on what to do. Keep pressure on this. Don't let up, no matter what. This is bad, this is very bad. We were being chased, Yoshi explained. I managed to lose them by going across the roof, but they'll find us eventually. Luigi explained about the basement tunnel, and the dinosaur agreed it was their best bet. They loaded Mario back onto his saddle, Vivian glued to his side and set off. The impatient toads were already halfway out the door, chattering amongst themselves. One took a spear in the side the moment they had all entered the courtyard, and the others scattered in a panic. Luigi snapped his head up and saw that they had been found. Scores of soldiers were spilling from the rooftops, eyes bright, dropping into the yard like the star bits had, an eternity ago. Everybody run, now. Get to the basement. Yoshi broke into a sprint, Vivian struggling to keep up, and led the survivors to the stairwell across the way. Spears hailed down from the stone terrace above them, 
and Luigi found himself bobbing and weaving through the old party tents, hoping for a little cover. Here and there, he dodged foes on the ground. A particularly large and brutish enemy awaited Luigi in one of the tents, brandishing an axe bigger than he was. Luigi, of course, kept right on running, but he swiped away the tent's support pole as he did, sending the canvas crashing down on the thrashing monster. Eventually, they reached the door. Luigi was the last to enter, holding the door for the others and slamming it behind them when he dashed inside himself. That would only buy them seconds, but they needed every last one. Just ahead, the steps of a narrow torch-lit staircase fell away into the gloom. This part of the castle was older, the moldy stone hallways twisted and thin. They would need to lose their pursuers in this maze of tunnels if they wanted to see their freedom. With the scream of a hinge, the door burst open and the troops boiled in. Suddenly, a spear was at Luigi's throat, and he kick vaulted back out of range. Too far, as he landed on open air and tumbled head over heels down the stairs. The others were too far gone, a hallway or two ahead by now and Luigi found as he tried to stand that he had twisted his ankle in the fall. With a yelp, he sank to his knees and glared back up the stairway. From here, he had a perfect view as the lead spearman readied his weapon, took stance, and threw. His aim was true. Star spirits, he prayed, please don't let Mario find my diary. He shut his eyes and waited for the end. After it should have come but didn't, he waited a little bit longer. When he heard the spear clatter to the ground behind him, he opened his eyes and looked back. Somehow, he was alive. Somehow, the spear had passed right by him. Somehow, his arm was translucent. No, the spear hadn't passed by him. It had passed through him. Back up the stairs, the soldiers were hesitating. Luigi glanced around, trying to make some sense of this. In the end, he felt her before he saw her. Clutching his shoulder, mirth in her eyes, was a pale green boo. Well, we're certainly in trouble, aren't we? Asked the boo. She gave a little shake of her twin red bows, and Luigi realized that he knew this ghost. Mario had brought her home once during one of his adventures, and Luigi had been scared out of his mind. He never did like booze. But now this ghost, Bao, he recalled, had saved him. He thanked her and got to his feet. He felt he could run, but not very far. When I let go, those guys are going to see you, she told him, so you had better hobble as fast as you can. I'll be right behind you. Why are you helping me? Luigi asked, still wary. Why ever not? She replied. I've been watching you. Mario is a dear friend of mine, and you want to keep him safe. That means I need to keep you safe. But, I can't hide person who's moving, so hurry up. With that, she pulled away and Luigi was thrust back into the corporeal plane. The soldiers saw him in an instant, and resumed their chase. Running on adrenaline, he ignored his ankle and dashed into the basement hallways. Once or twice, he heard spears clatter behind him, and knew that he hadn't lost his pursuers yet. The castle's basement was a dreary old place, filled with empty rooms and stale air. Rats scurried by underfoot, and once Luigi swore he saw a moth-eaten painting of a fiery face leering at him from some forgotten alcove as he sprinted past. At last, after a hundred twists and turns, Luigi reached the tunnel they had all seen on the maps. He dropped down the small ledge into the dry canal, where he found the others waiting for him. His ankle gave out again then, and Toadette hurried over to help him up. Luigi scanned the group, doing a headcount. They had lost two more toads at some point, bringing their little party down to six. 
seven if you counted Bao, who phased into view and floated over to join the others. Toad and Toadette reeled back, not quite sure what to make of this new arrival, but she quickly assured them she was harmless, at least when she wanted to be. It didn't take long for the troops to find them, but Luigi soon understood why the group had paused at this spot. It was the ultimate choke point, perfectly enclosed and so narrow that two people could barely stand side to side. When the enemies came, they were ready. It turned out that Yoshi had amassed quite a stockpile eggs during the chase, and now he launched them like missiles at the armored soldiers as they marched into view, single file down the tunnel. One egg shattered against a spearman's helmet, and they passed out limp in the hallway. The next tried to climb over their fallen comrade, but another egg took them out the same way. On and on it went, and before long the old canal was backed up from floor to ceiling with groaning metal bodies. Talk about a drain clog, thought Luigi. After this, those fuzzies don't seem quite so bad. Nobody felt like sticking around, so they turned and left their pursuers behind. The party of seven emerged back into the black night on the banks of a shallow river. The air was cold, and still, and they were hopelessly alone. Up on the hill behind them, Peach's castle burned like an inferno. Where do we go now? asked Vivian, never leaving Mario's side. Luigi climbed the bank and peered into the darkness. Far away, at the edge of a forest across a wide flat field, a lone candle flickered in a window. We go there, he pointed, and we try to get help. It was all they could do. Together they set off across the marshes. Far behind, the sounds of fire and slaughter echoed under an empty alien sky. End of chapter